Hello, Nuggets. So I thought I would do a video. Uh, this one's going to be called So You Want to Make a Game. All right. So I've done a video about uh, which game engine should you use before. So some of this might be covered in that. But um, this is more aimed at the person sitting at home who's been playing games all their life and never thought they would do it. Um, never thought of actually making, having, giving a go of it. So this is more about the person who wants to just add it to their list of things they want to try. They want to make a game, young or old, you're just like, I want to dive in and try something, where should I start? So this is all about where you start on your journey. Now, I don't necessarily practice what I preach. <laughs> all right, but this comes from someone who has been making independent games for quite a while now, nothing that successful, but also been in the industry for over 15 years. So I know a lot about the games industry. So if you're sitting there, <clears throat> I think for the most part, this will apply to people still in school who love playing games and have like are just bursting with these ideas and they want an outlet. Like which direction do I go with Unreal? Do I go with Unity? Do I go with, what do, do I need a Photoshop license? How do, I, how do I learn Maya? How do I learn Maya? All of that kind of stuff. I'm going to basically give you a list of what you need. And I'm just going to add something because I just, <laughs> while I'm talking about it, I just add something. All right. Um, I'm going to go through the stuff. Now, this is also for those who don't have any money, right? So if you're broke, this list is for you because most of these things are free. And where they're not free, I'll give you some alternatives, right? So uh, let's just get it out of the way. Let's talk about the engine. So... There are lots of different engines. You have Game Maker Studio, you have Unity, Unreal, Godot, Construct. There are honestly there are new ones coming out all the time. In fact, if you go onto Indie Dev, the subreddit Indie Dev, um, you'll see people sometimes advertising the engine they're currently working on. I will tell you right now, if it's just you, which it is, if you're an indie game dev, maybe one other person, maybe you and a friend or a couple of friends, or maybe you've got a game clan and you've talked about it and you want to make maps for a game and that's evolved into, let's just make a little game, you know. Whatever it is, it's a small group, right? If it's a small group of people, it's not Unreal and it's not Unity. It's not. <laughs> Unity, there's arguments for, right? There's a lot of positives about it. But I have a preference because... I have used so many engines in my career and I can tell you that Unreal I picked up and I understood almost immediately and I came from Radiant and back in the day, um, the Quake engine basically, Radiant and Unreal were at war, right? And if you were, not really, but in the developers' minds, in my mind at least they were, if you were a Radiant user, you didn't like Unreal. It had this weird CSG subtract mode where you're, you're cutting chunks out, whereas in Radiant you're building them up. And so much has changed over the years, right? But basically Unreal has developed into this absolutely beautiful engine. It's stunning, right? And the rewards are fantastic. You can jump in and learn it pretty damn quickly. The problem is it's not built for one person. It's built for a massive team because the engine is complex and deep and has a massive amount of integrated parts that work together. And you need to understand so much to get that engine running. Like just because you can understand how to make a beautiful shader in Unreal doesn't mean you know how to animate a character, right? The systems can be extremely different. It's a beautiful engine. It really is. And it's very tempting as, a, as an indie dev to say, well, in an hour, I can make an incredible looking level in Unreal. So therefore, that's what I want. But that's different from making a game, right? What will happen, I'm telling you right now what will happen, if it's just you and a friend or just you on your own, you'll start with Unreal, it will look beautiful. And about three months in, you'll start to get really frustrated when you realize because of how expansive the engine is, your scope has got out of control, right? Um, there's not even to mention whether you're making 2D. If you're making a 2D game, then Unreal is just not out of the question. You just don't do it, right? Blanket. It has no 2D support, despite what they say, despite, uh, what's it called? Unreal Paper, Paper, Papercraft. I can't remember what it's called now. They have officially a 2D engine. Don't use it. In fact, Google it. You'll find all of these people who have tried to use it and released games with it. And their advice is always don't do that. Go to Unity or go to something else, right? 
So Unreal, don't do it when you're small because it's just gonna it's just gonna scope up, and it's you're you're setting your sights way too high, right? It's just not something you should be dealing with yet. It's that's way down. That's when you get into a career, right? So now you're down to okay, what other options you have? Game Maker Studio is good, right? But um, it feels like it's phasing out because there are better options out there. It's a hundred bucks to buy as well, which if you're an indie dev, I don't think you should be plumping down a hundred bucks for an engine when you don't know if you're even going to finish the first week. I just don't think you should be doing that, right? It's not, it's not worth it. Um, and it's also very proprietary. So the way they do things, like it doesn't, that knowledge doesn't translate very well to other engines. And I'm going to ignore all the smaller ones and come down to Godot and Unity. I would always recommend Godot over Unity. Unity does both 2D and 3D extremely well, and it's also industry standard. There's a huge support network. There is tons of resources. It has a huge marketplace so you can buy something. There's all of these things that appear on the surface to be very positive about it, right? But there's a lot of things which are bad about it. Firstly, you have to pay, right? The engine may be free, but if you actually make something, if something huge comes out of this and your dream is realized, it's going to cost you money. And for your first game, you need every penny you can make, right? The second thing is stuff like part of the selling point is this great asset library. Well, you shouldn't be using stuff in the asset library. Not yet. <clears throat> People may disagree with that. But if you need stuff from the asset library for your first game, then your scope is wrong. You shouldn't be thinking like that. You should be thinking smaller because you need to know the engine. You need to develop the systems yourself and you need to keep it small and tight, right? Um... So those are the second things against it. The third thing against it is some people would disagree with this, but I've got 15 years in development, so I think I'm right. It's a lot harder to use than Godot. Godot is really is deceptively simple to use. It's so simple to use that it's a little confusing. Some people might think that it's a poor engine. Like, how can it be this easy to use and good? Well, it is both. You could release a game. It's a little young, so there haven't been many games really i mean there's lots on itch.io but there's nothing famous you would have heard of but you should be the first one then it's going to come and they're working on a new engine godot 4 which who knows when it will come out but right now godot 3.2.6 or whatever we're on right now is stable and it's fantastic and the 3d elements if you're making 3d you might want to consider unity because although Godot does it, it, the performance isn't great and there are some issues with it. But again, you should probably be making a 2D game if it's your first game. Just get it done. Like, like get a 2D game done, even if it's a Flappy Bird clone or something. Get something done, complete it, check that box, and then say, did I enjoy that? Shall I go for something bigger? And for that metric, Godot. You can use C++ if you want to, although I wouldn't, right? Or C Sharp, rather. Um... I would use GD Script, which is basically Python and very easy to learn. Um, the system, the building of scenes and the instancing of objects is very simple to learn. It's got reasonably good support. It's got a good subreddit. It's tied in intrinsically with GitHub. So as new stuff comes out, you can go to GitHub. And although it doesn't have quite as many community or even anywhere near as many community resources as something like Unreal or Unity does, the few developers that have focused on it for tutorials and education are really good, right? So there's stuff like Kids Can Code and GD Script, and there's a young guy called Heartbeast. Um, they're really good. They teach you really, really well. You can just go to those three free resources and easily learn more than enough about Godot to make a whole game. Right, so the engine you should pick is Godot. That's it. Don't ignore everyone else. Don't pick up Unity. You can move to Unity later. Pick up Godot, you'll get a game done much quicker that way. Okay, how do you make the artwork? Okay, so if it's a 2D game, you need some kind of system. You need some kind of 2D program, right? So for the bigger stuff like background art or marketing art, or maybe your art style is a little bit more than just, you know, retro pixel art, you have a choice between Photoshop and some other things, right? Photoshop is expensive, right? Don't, not even thinking about cracked versions or any of that shit here. But Photoshop is really expensive. And I love Photoshop. And I have a subscription and I use it all the time. But I also have a couple of other programs that are free. And they're GIMP and Krita. Krita. I don't know how you say it. K-R-I-T-A. Uh, I highly recommend both of them. And if there were only one, I would download GIMP. 
right? I actually prefer Krita. I think it's like just a, such a beautiful program. It's open source. It's free. Uh, it's got some really cool pixel art tools, like specifically pixel art tools. So you can use it for a ton of things. But it's also huge right there's so much it can do it actually feels way more expansive than even photoshop like when you open photoshop for the first time you might be a little overwhelmed when you open Krita, you're definitely going to be overwhelmed it just it's enormous but a lot of the systems are designed to have a similar feel to photoshop so there is some muscle memory that's going to kick in there you are going to feel a little familiar with it if you know any of those big programs but just in general gimp is you know, it's a stalwart. It's been around a long time. There's a lot of resources on it. Uh, it has some uh, really good plugins that you can use. Um, little things like if you have a collection of images that um, you've made in a 3D program, for example, you've taken a snapshot of something and you want to make a sprite sheet, GIMP has plugins. So you can put all of these together on layers, press a button, and it will give you a sprite sheet, right? There are lots of different ways to do that, but GIMP is a really good one-stop for everything. There's a learning curve. You still have to learn this program, but um, it's pretty good. And when you have some money <laughs> or when you have a free license or whenever, however you end up with Photoshop, Photoshop, once you know GIMP, Photoshop would be easy. You'll get in there pretty quick and you'll love it and you'll never look back because Photoshop is better than all of this stuff, I think. You know, although Krita is very, very good. Um, but the, the learning curve on Krita is so huge. But if you want to make art, your one stop, your first place you should go is GIMP, two point whatever it is, whatever we're on now, the latest. Um, it's uh, it's very good. It's free, very important. And I would install Krita if you have the space as well. Just have it and start playing with it because you never know, it might affect you. If you're a real high quality artist, like if you're doing, if you're making an adventure game and you want absolutely stunning, beautiful backgrounds and you don't have any money, you're going to need Krita. You can do it with GIMP, but not as well as you can in Krita. So maybe download both of them, but focus most of your early attention on learning GIMP. Second on the art thing is uh, pixel art. So if you're making a 2D game, you want it to look retro or very simplistic, you should be thinking about getting an even simpler program than GIMP or Krita. And there are two primary choices out there. are actually more than this, but there are two that I'm going to give you. Um, there's one that everyone knows, which is Ace Sprite. And there's another one called Pixel, P-Y-X-E-L, Pixel Edit, actually. Um, and they're good for different reasons, and they both cost money, but they're cheap. Aceprite is $15. Pixel Edit, I think, is $10. Um, if you only pick one, pick Aceprite, A-S-E-P-R-I-T-E. It's an excellent program. It takes a little getting used to because it has a retro UI as well, which I think is actually really crappy and they should overhaul. But I think the reason they've kept it is to drive home their mantra of this is a simple program that is based purely on creating pixel art. And then hidden under the surface, there's some very cool little things in there, right? But if you want to do some pixel art and you want to do some animation, it's a very good system. It's a beautiful program. It feels indie. You feel like a part of the indie network when you buy it. Um, and there's tons of fantastic tutorials and resources on it. And also the people who make Ice Sprite, or person, it might be one person, they do listen to the community. You can feel their presence, right? So if you join their forums and you make enough noise about a feature, they're going to see it, and with any luck, it will get in the game. The one thing it's not good at is tiling. It's got better, and if you only ever use Ace Sprite, you might think this is nonsense, it's fine at it, but there are better options out there. So I have another program which costs $10, which is called Pixel Edit, P-Y-X-E-L-E-D-I-T. Now, this is really good for um, making tiled work, right? So making tile sets like, you know, a 47 tile auto tile set with the paths and the cliffs and the all stuff like that. It's really good because it's very, very quick to bang it out. It opens very quickly. The problem with Pixel Edit is it gets updated once every two years because the person who makes it, and it is one person, has another job and probably just doesn't make enough money off of Pixel Edit for that to be their full-time gig. Um, but just buy it once, and it's a little crashy. There are some things it doesn't do very well, but it's really good for quickly opening. Like, I'll give you an example. So I will find myself working to set up a new project and I'm like oh you know what I need a grid texture for the plane on the ground and I don't like the ones I have so I'm going to make a new one the program I open to make that is pixel edit 
because I can make it, export it to a PNG, put it in the right place in 30 seconds, and it's done. I can do all of that with Asprite. I can do it with GIMP. I can do it with Krita. I can do it with Photoshop. I can do it with all of those. But Pixel Edit is just so fast and lightweight. I think it's worth having both. And it really shines if you're making a tile set. It just has really good tools for laying everything out. You can animate as well, although Asprite is definitely better at the animation thing. The Asprite animation system using frames is a little quirky at first, and it takes some getting used to. But like all of these tools, you just need to commit a day or two of solid focus on it. And in fact, I think that would be my first recommendation to you, right? If you're thinking of making a game, don't download everything and then dip into everything. Literally just focus your mind and say, okay, for two days, I'm going to learn GIMP, right? And that's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to make any, maybe I'll have, maybe I've got my game in my head and I'll just make a piece of artwork for it that I'll then throw away. But my purpose is to learn GIMP. And then for two days, my purpose is to learn Asprite. And then for two weeks, my purpose is to learn Godot. Really focus on that one task in hand first. Because if you learn bits and pieces, that's how you end up getting frustrated and going back into old habits. You know, you don't want to do that. You want to learn this um, piece of software, these pieces of software, make them your toolkit, and then learning the software will never be a barrier to you completing your project, which is it, it is for most people who start in this. So don't be a sucker. <laughs> learn the piece of software, learn it well, and don't let it be a barrier to completing. Okay, uh, let's see. So I've got Asprite. In my toolkit, I currently have Godot. I have GIMP. I have Krita sitting there, and I don't own it that much, but it's there. Um, I have Asprite and Pixel, so I've spent $25 so far. Uh, next, I will uh, download Visual Code. So there's a lot of code editors out there, right? Now, you may not even use it. In Godot, the built-in editor is fine because Godot is designed to be put on one monitor. The new Godot that's coming out whenever next year, probably 4.0, I think is multi-monitor support. But Godot is a single monitor, and before Godot, that was one of the things that put me off. I'm like, I can't have a single monitor. I use Unreal. I've got like my game window over here and I've got my info window over here. And I, like I needed the three windows. Same with Unity. I'm like, I need my monitors. Godot is one monitor and I use it in one monitor and it's great once you adjust to it. And that includes the scripting. It is a little annoying to go between the screen and the script. And if that's the thing, like you're like, here's the game view and now I have to look at the script. I've got to change it and I can't see the game view. So you want the script open at the same time you need a third-party script editor, which Godot will automatically open. You can link it. And of those, there are several. There are Atom. There are Visual Studio Full. I would choose Visual Code. It's small. It's lightweight. It's beautiful to read. I mean, you can feel how long Visual Studio has been making this kind of program because it just looks stunning, right? It's got tons of community plugins. So You've got plugins for Godot. You've got plugins so it understands your script and your classes and everything works really well. It handles JSON files really well. So if you, or CSV files um, converted to JSON, well, JSON files. So if you have a database in your game, you know, let's say you're doing, I don't know, let's say a wave shooter with enemies and each enemy has a different set of values, right? Uh, you're going to hold that in a CSV somewhere and convert it to a JSON and bring it in. Well, you can open the JSON in Visual Studio, Visual Code, and it looks fantastic alongside your regular um, uh, script files, GD script files. Now, there are lots of options here. I used to use Atom. Atom is beautiful too. And there's a couple of other ones. Um, it's like Notepad++ still works. And I like that as well. I just feel that um, Visual Code... I started using it recently. It's just so beautiful to look at. There's something about the interface that gives you confidence. Like when I f open Notepad++, which I've been using for 15, 20 years now, I'm still a little confused every time I open it. Like, I'm like, oh, wait, why are the tabs open? I thought I closed that. Didn't I close that script file? There'll be script files open in Notepad++ that I opened like seven years ago. And it's still there. And I'm like, why is that? Oh, God, I got to close that. It's just one of those programs. And with Atom, I just found it was very millennial. <laughs> I don't know. It felt like it was trying so hard to say, look how cool we are. Whereas Visual, Co Visual Code is just cool. It just works really well. No fluff. It's just really good. And it does look beautiful. So Visual Code, my recommendation. So 
We've covered the scripting, we've covered the 2D, the artwork, uh, the 2D art and concept art potentially. We've covered the engine. Let's cover 3D. Okay, 3D is nice and simple, you'll be pleased to know. There are options out there. There's Maya, there's Max, there's Blender, there's ZBrush, there's all of that. Blender is the best piece of creative software ever written. I'm just going to say it out there. I don't care what anyone says. It is the number one piece of software before you install anything else. In fact, you don't need to make, make a game. Just do, go make Blender. Go get Blender and play with it. It's an extraordinary achievement. And 2.8 I'm talking about. And on well, now they're at 2.9, whatever. Um, but it is a must-have. It is better than Max and better than Maya. And I've had jobs where I've had to learn both of those, right? And I like Maya. I do like Maya. But for example, the process of setting up Maya when you move to a new company or if you lose your settings or whatever is so laborious. It's just like, okay, I've got to set up my shelves. Okay, I have my own special, like, I want to, I like to walk the camera with my WASD or if I'm a lefty with the arrow key. So I've got to install that plugin and that adding goes here and this is the way I like it. And all of that stuff is just, honestly, is just so much baggage and so much bloat on top of what is still a good program. Maya is still a fantastic program, but it can't hold a candle now to Blender. Blender is beautiful from the moment you open it. You can use Blender immediately. It is difficult. It's got a learning curve. Again, Download Blender, ignore all your other software, and just open it and leave it open on your computer and sit down in the morning and start work on it and spend a few hours a day just drilling down, drilling down, learning it. There's some great low-poly um, tutorials out there. There's a guy called Imfrenza, I-M-P-H-R-E-N-Z-A or Z-I-A. Anyway, uh, he's a Swedish guy. He's a fantastic tutor. He teaches you low-poly modeling in Blender 2.8. And it's a fan, you watch him and literally within, I would say, two days, you're suddenly aware of how amazing Blender is and what it can do for your creative side. So it's a must have. There's nothing to compare to it. Um, there are certain shortcuts you can use as well in Blender, which are fantastic. So you can um, you can put like palettes in it and you can color all of your objects with the palette real simple and you can export them so simply like today. I made a model of a space person, a spaceman, uh, an astronaut. This was a better word for it. I made a model of an astronaut, and I put it into Godot in a 3D game, and I hadn't done any of those three things before in about 25 minutes. It was just so quick and so simple. And all of that comes down to Blender. It's really inspiring. It's a piece of confidence-building um, software. So download it. It's free. Um, and start learning it. It's a must-have. And in fact... There's so much that Blender can do that I haven't even touched, right? There are people who make videos in Blender. They literally, they, they, they structure all of their videos in Blender. There's so much it can do. It's got notation straight on the screen. You can draw on a pencil so you can live share with people. It's just amazing. It's an amazing piece of software. So, so far, we've only spent $25, by the way. And you have almost everything you have. I've only got a couple of things left. So now we've got to talk about music and sound effects. Okay. Let's do sound effects first because it's easy. Audacity. Everyone knows it. It's fantastic. You should use it. If somehow you have a, uh, an Adobe license, I will say that Adobe Audition is a wonderful piece of software. For the sound effects editor, it is, or dialogue editor, it is absolutely amazing. So if you can get one, you should do it. One of the reasons it's so good, the preset system and the effects rack system is so good. So you can take a raw sound file, to say dialogue, right? And you're like, okay, this has got to sound like the guy it's got to sound like a dude's voice and it has to sound needs to sound more like um it sounds a lot deeper it's got to sound like kratos in god of war so i'm going to drop the pitch i'm going to put a little bit of reverb on it i'm going to use a compressor on it i'm going to limit it you can do all of these things to it right you can build that into a rack you can save the effects rack and every single thing every other sound file you can just batch convert now you can do this with a lot of software the way audition does it is just so easy you basically set up a project file and now I've got my Kratos effects and I've got my hero effects and I've got my speech effects and I've got, you know, all of this kind of stuff. It also has a speech converter, so it's great for dialogue. Um, so I highly recommend it. The problem is Audition costs money. So if you don't have it, you should go with Audacity, which is an extra... Uh, it's kind of like Blender. <laughs> it is a little long in the tooth now. It doesn't quite... It hasn't 
moved forward as quickly, right? There's not as many things it can do. But as a bass sound editor, just to pick stuff up and to clip it and to drop the sound, like you could do everything you need to do in Audacity. You can just do it. Uh, it it's the difference between having a, a watercolor set with 10, 15, 16 colors in it or buying that mega kit that has 100 colors in it. Well, Audition is the mega kit and Audacity is the 16 color kit. You should be able to paint anything with that 16 color kit, right? So, and it's free and it's easy to use. And it's also, you know, if I want to record a quick sound file, Audacity is the thing I open, not Audition, because it opens so quickly. I've got it set up with my mic and I'm like, oh, I need to record this dialogue. Open, record, and talking is done. It's nice and simple. So definitely get Audacity, no matter what. And if you can somehow get Audition, go for it. Um, okay. The other side of the uh, audio is the music, if you're making the music. So... There are so many doors out there, digital audio workstations, and so many of them are free. And it's changed over time. Like Cakewalk is free now. Sonos is free, whatever it's called now. Pilot One, Sound Pilot. But there's so many free ones out there, right? Um, and I've actually tried all of them because I'm a frustrated musician. No, I'm not. I'm not a musician even remotely. I'm a frustrated not musician. That's the problem. So I can't do anything, but I've, I've got this. I think many people have this. I have this desire to write music. And I've tried many, and I think I finally found the one I like, but it's not free, and that's Ableton Live. It's really good. Ableton Live is really, really solid, and it's got systems that once you learn them, it's very intuitive. It makes sense to you. There's still a couple of weird things like the way you zoom in and out of stuff. But if you're serious about it, it has a 90-day trial, so you can really get into it. And then I think the cheapest one is 100 bucks, which is a lot of money, I admit. But digital audio workstations are kind of incredible pieces of software. It's the kind of thing that once you buy it, if you're into it, it's like the rest of your life on this piece of equipment. It's beautiful. You know, it's, 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 um, it's a beautiful piece of coding to create this. So it's worth paying the money for. There's a lot of love in it. I would not suggest Pro Tools. I would not suggest any of that stuff. Um, Cakewalk Bandcamp. So it's good. I used it a little bit. It's confusing though. <laughs> it's confusing because is it Bandcamp or is it Cakewalk? And who am I? Where is my account? Is my stuff going online? I don't understand. Did I just save my stuff online and did it come back? Like it's very confusing. I think you should just buy your digital audio workstation, Ableton Live, and have it. Test it for 90 days. See if you like it. No one is better than the other. I've searched that question so many times. <laughs> Which is the best workstation for the big digital audio workstation for the beginner? There is no answer. So I'm the owner who will give you an answer. It's Ableton Live. That's the one. Go get it. It's the best one. There is another alternative out there which I tried and maybe I didn't commit to enough, but that's called LMMS. That's your free option. I've seen a lot of people recommend it. Um, and it's totally free and open source. And I feel like LMMS, if it gets the support, might become like the audio version of Blender, right? Or of Krita. Like it could get to that level where it can just, you know, it's just better than anything that you can pay for and completely change the industry, which is what Blender's going to do. Um, so you can try it, LMMS. Um, but if not, if you want to go tried and tested, spend your energy into learning Ableton Live. Okay, we're almost there. Uh, last thing is the other free tool you need Google Docs you must have Google Docs Word is great all of these other options are great but Google Docs is great because of the simplicity and access and that's what matters I don't like Google I don't trust them with my data I feel uncomfortable doing it but the truth is that when you're making a game it is really nice to have your design doc right there and accessible from wherever you are. So if you have an idea when you go to the beach for the day or you get on a plane or you go on vacation you want to have that content there. And for that alone, Google Docs is imperative. Also, when you're working with a team, a lot of the teams I work with, they don't they don't want me to have access to their server. So I can't get stuff off of Perforce or wherever, whatever they're using. Um, but Google Docs is usually a great access point for everyone, you know. Um, it's you're in that infrastructure, which means that you're kind of, you know, buying into the Google way of thinking. But it's really handy to have access. They also have really good tools. The other thing is, like Excel is a beautiful piece of software, right? And I use it all the time. And Google Sheets can't hold a candle to Excel. It can't do anywhere near as much stuff. But Google Sheets is just there and so simple. <laughs> like it's got a plug-in to turn it into a CSV to a JSON file. 
Like I just press a button and it's done. So again, you want things that aren't going to be a barrier to you. And if you're working with one or two other people, you want something that everyone can access. So for that alone, I would recommend using Google Docs. Um, it's just good. Have a Google account. If you need to, pay the buck 99 per month to get 150 gigs or whatever the hell it is, 100 gigs, something like that, which is enough stuff. Um, and then the final piece is learn GitHub. GitHub is really confusing, right? But in Godot and Unreal and in Unity, it's they, there are so many tutorials about setting up your work with GitHub. Um, just get it done. Again, spend a day learning GitHub. There's a great program called GitHub Desktop, which can't do everything, but once you've got it all installed, you can make a new, what they call a repository, download your work, and then no matter what happens at home or with your computer or wherever you are, you can access your content. It's backed up online. You need it. You need it. Game engines are, are crashy. Free it, free software is crashy so you want to just make sure that you always have a backup of the work and it's also good to have those watersheds so that if the game takes off you want to be able to roll back and download something from you know nine months ago make a little video and go this is where we were this is where we are you know and stuff like that all right quickly run through it at the end the tldr tldw is gimp or creta or both uh a sprite and pixel edit, PY, XEL. Um, Blender, number one. Uh, Visual Code, Godot, Ableton Live, LMMS if you have to, Audacity, and Google Docs. That's what you need to start. With those tools, you can do everything that you need to do to go make a video game. Uh, first thing you should do is just pick up Godot and start working on it. Pick up Godot and pick up Blender and just start working in those two programs. Get stuff going from Blender into Godot and you can pick up GIMP and stuff like that later. But just start with something real simple and get it moving across. Start making that game. All right, you little nuggets. Hope that was useful. All right, leave a like or subscribe if it was useful and I'll make more of these and actual in-depth stuff. But if no one's watching it, fuck it. That's all you get. All right, bye.